Hi everyone. Uh, we are on, let me get up there, section 2.4 carbohydrates. And let's see, it says summarize the chemical characteristics of a carbohydrate on the lecture study guide. So it tells you right here um, a little bit about carbohydrates and it says carbohydrates are composed of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen atoms. And usually they're in the ratio of um, carbon with the hydrogen and the oxygen at two to one, like water, H2O. So carbon and then hydrate, carbon and water. And that's where they originally got their name. So we're going to talk a little bit about the structure, the monosaccharides and the polysaccharides, disaccharides and polysaccharides. But before we do that, um, just to give you let's see it says state the roles of carbohydrates in human physiology and it says they are almost universally used as an energy source for living organisms including humans and you guys knew that already because um how many times have we talked about nutrition and carbohydrates or people might call them carbs and you're familiar with carbohydrates they're the starches and the sugars that we have in our diet and i'm going to expand on that a little bit to help you have a little bit better understanding of this this is something that um, we hear about all the time so to understand about carbohydrates i think is pretty important so um, it says compare the structures of simple and complex carbohydrates so if you look at our vocabulary you'll see our vocabulary talks about monosaccharides disaccharides and polysaccharides and so i'm going to go um, kind of go go with that terminology that's in your textbook and then you're going to learn a couple of examples of each of those that you should remember so again if you're looking at the vocabulary under this carbohydrate section uh, make sure that you understand which these are and what their roles are so here we go compare the structures of simple and complex carbohydrates so this is kind of a big one so here we have um, simple car carbohydrates we call them um, are the monosaccharides and mono means one saccharide means sugar and so what you can see with monosaccharides is they're just one unit of sugar one molecule here's a that's a molecule and so this molecule happens to be C6H12O6 that monosaccharide is actually glucose and um, so if I look at this molecule the way it was drawn there's six carbons one two three four five six and if I counted up all these hydrogens there'd be 12 and there'd be six oxygens so um, sometimes chemists write it out as this whole molecule or you can just write it as this molecular formula so when we're looking at monosaccharides they're the simplest of the carbohydrates and they're one one unit um, and the unit that a lot of them are composed of is a monosaccharide called glucose and again you've heard of that and when somebody says blood sugar they're talking about glucose so uh, in your definition of glucose I would definitely include that glucose is blood sugar and we're going to talk about how glucose is kind of the building block of a lot of different carbohydrates. Um, this picture is just showing you different ways that chemists write the same things. But um, I'll use the word glucose or um, you might even recognize that C6H12O6. Another common monosaccharide is fructose and fructose is the monosaccharide the sugar found in fruits and again you hear a lot about that in nutrition discussions because um, the the fruit sugar you know a lot of times people say how much fructose how much fruit sugar can you eat compared to table sugar which is a, a different one so um, fructose is just a single mo uh, monosaccharide just like that it also mentions galactic I don't have galactose in your listing, but it's one of the monosaccharides in milk, and you don't have to remember that. So now we said, remember we did that um, molecules can undergo that hydro, uh, dehydration synthesis. So you can take some of these molecules and you can hook them together. So here's an example. Um, if you take two glucose molecules and you hook them together, they form a molecule called maltose. Now maltose is not in your vocabulary list, so you don't have to memorize that. But the the um the word disaccharide is and so a disaccharide are two monosaccharides um connected by a dehydration reaction you lose a water and now they're bonded together 
and we get a new molecule. So we had two molecules to start off with, and now we have one molecule plus a molecule water, dehydration synthesis. So disaccharides are uh, made by joining two monosaccharides together in a dehydration reaction. And this one just happens, they happen to show you the example of maltose. Now here's one, a disaccharide that you have heard about, and it is on your list. Um, and so I want you to remember this. It says when glucose and fructose join together, the disaccharide is called sucrose. And you know sucrose as ordinary table sugar. There's, a, there's sucrose, a um, high amount of sucrose in sugar cane and sugar beets, but um, you're most familiar, that, familiar with sucrose as table sugar. So it has glucose and fructose in it. So um, it has that, the, those two particular monosaccharides together. Another common disaccharide is a saccharide called lactose, and probably most of you are familiar with the idea that that's the sugar found in milk. And that happens to be glucose and galactose together, two monosaccharides together that form lactose. And it has here, it says some people that are lactose intolerant can't break that bond between glucose and galactose. And um, it leaves the lactose in their digestive system for um, bacteria to degrade and causes a lot of gas production. We're into the complex carbohydrates, and these are polysaccharides. So now if you look at this picture, you'll see that um, you, you're recognizing there's a monosaccharide, and there's a monosaccharide, and there's a monosaccharide, and there's another one, and then they just started drawing them as little hexagons here. Um, and so these can each be separate molecules of glucose. But when they undergo dehydration synthesis, you connect them together. And when we connect um, many of them together, we call that a polysaccharide. So remember, two together is a disaccharide, and one alone is a monosaccharide. Okay, Monosaccharide, um, glucose and fructose. Our disaccharides, I want you to know, are sucrose and lactose. And then our polysaccharides, there's three of them. And um, poly contains many. Turns out the monosaccharides in our three most important polysaccharides are all glucose. So a, um, the three polysaccharides we're going to talk about are all big, long chains of glucose. The difference between them is how these chains are hooked together. And so, again, that gets into more detail than what I want to cover in this class. I want you to kind of know the take-home message. And the take-home message is there's three major polysaccharides in nature, and they are starch. You probably know where you can find some starch. Glycogen might be a little less familiar, and cellulose might be a little less familiar, although you know about it whether you realize it or not. So down here, it says... Um, Let's see. Sometimes they're referred to complex carbohydrates because they're big. Um, the polysaccharides starch and glycogen are long polymers of glucose found in plants and animals. So starch, think about where you get starch. Mm, we have potato starch, we have corn starch. So those are polysaccharides that are, that are made in plants and they're used to store glucose. Turns out that glucose is our major energy source in our blood um, running and just to run cells in general. So one way to store glucose is to have a big long chain of glucose. And so plants store glucose as starch. So a big long chain of glucose in a plant is going to be starch. And you are familiar with starch looking at a potato, right? Now humans do the same thing, or animals in general. They store glucose, or we store glucose, as a big long chain, and that's called glycogen. So starch is made by plants, glycogen is made by animals. Both are big long chains of glucose that allow our cells to store glucose. Instead of storing lots of individual glucose molecules, they store this big long chain. Glycogen and starch are a little bit different in how they're bonded together, but both of them are storage forms of glucose and act as energy sources. The one, the polysaccharide that's kind of different, oh, here they're showing you a potato, like here's some potato cells and some starch grains in there. Um, here's glycogen. It looks a whole lot like starch. 
Okay, it's just a little bit different as far as how it's hooked together. Glycogen, you're going to find a lot of it in the liver. And there's actually um, glycogen in our muscles too. So um, animals store a large uh, store glucose in the form of glycogen. Okay. The last polysaccharide is called cellulose. Cellulose is also a big long chain of glucose, and it happens to be um, probably the most abundant carbohydrate on the planet because it makes up plant cell walls. And plant cell walls are what you know in your diet as fiber. So when you're eating plants and there's undigestible material, you know, think of celery. There's a lot of fibrous stuff there. And um, a lot of that we can't digest. It just runs through us. But it also helps us keep our um, our bowels working correctly, helps our intestines, you know, move food through there. And so cellulose is actually um, beneficial to our diets, but it's found in all plants. It's all the, the um, leafy material, that structural material in plants, um, in the leaves and, and um, in wood and that kind of thing. We can't digest cellulose, but like I said, it can be beneficial to our digestive tract and we'll call it uh, fiber. And so the um, cellulose looks a lot like glycogen and starch, but it's a big long chain of glucose. It's just the way the glucose molecules are hooked together that's different. So I think that covers all of our information on carbohydrates. Yeah, and there's some questions there you can, oh, I have this fiber in the diet that I recommended that you read. And, um, and then there's a couple questions you can answer here.